my name is Leslie Onstead and I want to welcome you to the Color Art Spring Team educational event. We have 14 artists with 14 videos to watch. Each one will be offering you a secret word or two as a clue to form a secret phrase so you can enter our $400 shopping spree. We are very excited about these educational events. We'll be doing another one in July and another one in September to continue to teach people how to use color art products. I do have one bit of shameless adver adver advertisement for you. Uh, the new Prism Pour Ancient Metal Sets was just released this weekend. Those are your favorite metallic colors, including abalone shell and the newest color, Obalite, put in a bottle. So without further ado, let's get started on our event. We're very excited. First step, I created my design on tracing paper. Then I transferred the design using graphite paper to my canvas. Next, I transferred the design onto my six inch tape with the graphite paper so I could create a mask protecting my work when I want to color my background. In this section, I'm filling in the background with some golden fallow blue, red shade, quinacridine magenta, and cadmium yellow mixed with white. And I'm starting at the top with the darker color. As I add the next color that's wet, it's a shade lighter so I can brush up into the color that was before, creating a gradient background. In this section, it's the string swipe with the prism pour. So what I've done is I've mixed up some golden fallow green in some Australian Floetrol, three parts Floetrol, one part golden to make a cell activator. 
Next, I took some Winter Veil and Morning Light Prism Pour Iridescent Silks. Mix them two parts color, one part varnish. Now I'm laying down the winter veil on one side, the violet, and the morning light, the blue, on the other side. I'm not pouring it on because I don't need it too wet. I just need enough paint to make it moist so the string will glide. But the less I put on there, the less I have to mop up once I pull the string. Now I'm carefully laying the string around the shape that I've drawn down on my canvas. Be careful to roll, roll, be careful when you're doing this period, but I roll up part of the string really tight on my right forefinger and pick up the bottom half of the wet string. Yes, I have gloves on and carefully lay it down. We're gonna have a longer video so you can see the exact process, but this is how I did it. And then my finger, once the, the string is laid down, I am putting my finger down and pulling the string through my finger, under my finger, and my finger is holding the string in place so the shape stays exactly how I drew it. In this section, I'm glazing with primary elements. Yes, you can make a glaze. What does that mean? That means mixing your color in a glazing medium and it makes the color transparent so you can see color through color. This first section you see I'm mixing up some autumn leaf with a glazing medium. And I ended up mixing up some carnival that new reddish pinky color that is in the Starbucks Galaxy set as a second color down for my glazing. In this section, I've taken some resin, mixed it up, and let it set for an hour. I wanted it to have a chance to thicken up so it wouldn't run off my leaves. Then I took some of the red raspberry resin art tint, mixed it with a little bit of alcohol so the mineral carrier falls off, and poured drops of the red tint into my resin so it was crystal clear. And with a paintbrush, I glazed over the leaves with the red tint. 
be very careful to wash your brush afterwards with alcohol and I mean wash 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 and when you think it's clean wash it again and wash it again to get all that resin out of the ferrule that way you can use it again By allowing that resin to set up for an hour, this resin red raspberry glaze on top of the leaves stayed in place and the resin did not move. This is the final touch up. So my flower pot on the top, I did a gradient in cadmium yellow, some Kodak Rooney magenta, a little bit of yellow. I did my veining with some fallow green. And then I took some resin, let it set for another half hour, hour to thicken up, and mix just a little bit of turmeric and butterscotch. Butterscotch is a galaxy diamond color that has color and mica in it. Turmeric is one of our tints. Normally we tell you to mix our tints in the alcohol first, but because the mineral carrier just like mica, because I was using the butterscotch, I could add just a pinch of turmeric and just a pinch of the butterscotch to get this beautiful golden shimmery yellow, which I hand painted over this yellow flower pod. And the final touch, I've had some rocks and some fire glass that we pre-painted with some primary elements and vivid art fluid. I'll show you guys how to do that in another video, but these, this fire glass and these stones have been colorized with our uh, dry paint line. I took a little bit of golden uh, cadmium yellow and the Kodakini magenta just kind of outline the circle where the center is going to be. Next, I added some clear gel medium in there because it's going to behave as an adhesive for our glass and rocks. Next, I laid down the uh, jasmine pink and coral berry fire glass on the outside ring and then the rocks in the center uh, were done with snapdragon uh, sky blue, mystic blue, and a little bit of Payne's Gray, regular rocks in the center. And it'll be poured over with clear resin in the end. And maybe a little pinch of some sparkly mica will be sprinkled on top. A tiny bit of abalone shell as we say goodbye to the center of this piece. I want to thank you all for joining us for our spring uh, teaching event. We're grateful to see you here. We hope that you are lucky enough to win one of our 15 prizes being offered. Uh, next up is Sheldon Briscoe. Make sure you look down into the description so you can see all the video links and watch the videos in order. See you at the next video and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Life is art. Live yours in color.